In this video, we're going to deal with the autopsy forensics tool, and more specifically, we're going to deal with case management within autopsy. Now, autopsy is the forensics browser or the graphical user interface for the command line tools known as the sleuth kit. To begin with, we're going to go ahead and click on the K menu, and I'm going to click on backtrack, digital forensics, forensics analysis, and then autopsy. This is going to go ahead and open up our shell tool for us. Now to start with, all I need to type in is autopsy. If you take a quick look here, there are a couple other options or switches or arguments that I can add to the command that will allow me to change some of the default settings. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter right now. and You're going to see that it's going to go ahead and say that the process is currently running. And it is. And it's currently running at port 9999. So if you wanted to change that port, you could use the option here for the remote address uh, to change some of these default things. Now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to right click I'm not I'm going to right click on this highlighted URL and choose copy. Do not use control C to copy this. Control C if you look at the next line actually exits our program. So do not copy it that way. So now that I've highlighted it, right clicked and copied or you can just memorize the URL there. I'm going to minimize the shell and I'm going to keep that running. Let's go ahead and open up Firefox. And once we've got Firefox opened up, what I can do is actually paste that URL inside of there. So we're going to run the localhost at port 9999 and then we're going to use the autopsy directory. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and this is the beginning of using autopsy. Now we're going to get into the actual case management of autopsy and a couple things that we want to look at is first if you notice everything is going to be called a case to start with and this is going to be pretty much if you're working on a specific case or a specific crime that's going to be my actual case. So this is the top of my hier hierarchical structure. So we're going to go ahead and I'll click on open case just real quickly to show you that there are no current cases in here. But if you do notice the file path for the forward slash, the VAR forward slash, LIB forward slash autopsy, this is where our cases or all the case information, the log files and everything for each one of our cases are going to actually be created and stored. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'll just hit back here and I can choose new case. So let's go ahead and choose the new case and begin our case. For this case I'm just going to push 001 and uh, that'll be my case number. We can add a description for the case and you can see here I've got suspect in crime just something similar to the case and then the inspectors uh, you can go ahead and add a name to your in investigators uh, that you've got within this case. So I'm going to go ahead now and choose new case and you can see that it's already created a case for me and the case is going to be saved of course in the same file path but within the case number that you assigned. So I'm going to go ahead now and add a host for our case, we can have multiple devices or multiple computers or just hardware or whatever it is we're dealing with for our case. And so this is going to be every one of our hosts. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Add Host. So now that we're adding a host, one thing to keep in mind is that this host name has to be used for a directory name. So we cannot have any spaces within this within the Linux operating system. So we're going to go ahead and just call this Office Desktop. And we're going to go ahead and write a description for this uh, main computer in the office. Now there's a couple other things we can adjust. The time zone, if we're working in a different time zone than what the computer was taken from or, or where the crime happened, we can adjust our time zone. If we don't put anything here, it's just going to go ahead and use our default time zone on our computer. And then they've got the time skew adjustment, which, which we can adjust if our seconds are slightly off with our computer. Now five and six here, these are paths for hash databases of known files within operating systems, which we could import into here, which could compare all of the files that are on the image that I have to note if there are any corrupted files or if there are any bad files that we're particularly looking for, or just to alleviate the files that all belong to the operating system that are known to be good files so we can kind of narrow our search down. We're going to go ahead and ignore both of these and I'm just going to go ahead and say now add host. And so our host has now been added and you can see the information here for our host. Now that I've got the actual host or the device added we can start adding the images that we were able to use when we captured our images or acquired our images for the, from the forensics. So let's go ahead now and choose add image. And so here we go, we're going to begin adding the image. So we'll choose add image file. And now we're going to have to type in the path for the image. So let's show you where that image is actually located. Let's go ahead and minimize this so we can take a look at my drive or my image that was taken in the data acquisition. I'm going to go to storage media and I plugged in a hard drive within the computer. 
If I hit the refresh, if you don't see anything, hit the refresh and it will go ahead and should pull up your hard drives you have plugged in if you've got any. And this is the new volume as the name of that folder and then the WinXP image.dd. So this is the location that I've got and uh, for the media, actual location is going to be forward slash media. Uh, and I'll type in the forward slash and this is where the actual new volume is for your file path. So you're actually going to want to use this as your file path. This is going to be a problem, the new and the volume. If, you've, if you have a space, it's going to be a problem. I'm going to show you how to get around that space here in just a second. And the reason why it's a problem, if I go back to this adding a new image, within this box, this text box, I cannot have any spaces and I've already tried double quotes and single quotes and you cannot quote out that space. So you need to make sure that your file path has no spaces in it at all. So I'm going to go back to this and here's my workaround for this if this is the case because I cannot rename this volume from here. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder. I'm going to call it Forensics. And now we're going to do a symbolic link. So I'll teach you quickly how to do a symbolic link. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do ln space dash s. And then we're going to go ahead and type in the file path that's going to be used here. I'll type in a quote. It's going to be the forward slash media forward slash the new folder our new volume that I've used forward slash and then the image when XP image .dd. So that's the actual file path to the image and it's going to be linked to that folder, the forensics folder. So I'm going to now go ahead and type in the forward slash media forward slash forensics there and I'll go ahead and hit enter and this is going to create that symbolic link. So I'm going to close this and so now if I click in this forensics folder you're going to see that image is linked there. So this is what you can do for a workaround. If you didn't have a space within there, well then you're fine the way you are, but I needed to find my workaround by creating a symbolic link here. So my file path is now going to be forward slash media, forward slash forensics, and then the name of my image. So let's go ahead and close out of this and come back to our adding an image. I'll type in forward slash media, forward slash forensics, forward slash win XP image dd. Now I know when I took this image it was a partition that I actually took an image of. If you've got a whole disk then you want to choose disk. And We're now going to go ahead and hit next. And you're going to see that it's gone ahead and looked and it's mounted it as it was a C drive. My file system was NTFS. A couple options you have here is you can ignore the hash value. You can try to calculate the hash value again which is going to give you your MD5 hash. Or you can go ahead and verify based on a, a previous MD5 hash. I'm going to go ahead and choose ignore for this purpose and just go ahead and hit add. And it's going to go ahead and say testing partitions, linking images into the evidence locker. And my image file has been added now to my evidence locker. So this has already been added. This is added to the host, which is part of the case. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now that we've got the image actually added to our host, I have a couple more options. I can add another image to it, or I can choose to analyze this particular image itself. And so if I choose analyze now, it's going to give me the options here to start analyzing. And there's several tools that I've got, a file analysis, keyword search, the file type, image details, the metadata, the data unit that I can actually use to actually modify this. So I'll just click on file analysis quickly to show you that this is the hard drive I've got plugged in. This was a Windows XP machine and you can start seeing some of those common folders from within Windows like the Windows folder, the program files folder and so forth. I'm going to go ahead and choose close for now um, and we're going to go back to the beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and choose close host. It's going to close our host and I'm going to actually choose close case. And this is going to go ahead and take us back to the main menu now by clicking on main menu. So here we are back at the main menu. Just to reiterate the fact of how everything works within autopsy, I've got a case. Now I've already created a case so let's go ahead and choose open case. This is my case which is 001. And I'm going to go ahead now and just hit OK on my case. And then within my case I've got my first host you can see it says Office Desktop. Now with this Office Desktop does have an image associated with it. And if we go ahead and click OK, we can now see the images. Well, and I've only currently got one, but I can see all the images that are associated with that host. And go back to Analyze. And now I can start analyzing that image. And this concludes the video on case management with Autopsy.